Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Last time we left off after a successful supply raid mission that also saw the first taste of action for our Spark Julian, and today we are getting close to the end of another in-game month, and because we do, there is one thing I would like to do before we advance into September. And no, that is not to grab the alien alloys here, I think last episode's supply raid handed us plenty. Instead, it's to pay a visit to the black market. Avenger plotting new course. We are close by anyway, so the journey will only take a few moments. And there are two weapon attachments for sale here that I would like to grab before the list of goods refreshes. And those two are the superior stock and the superior autoloader. The autoloader extremely useful for a lot of classes, in particular sharpshooters. The stock meanwhile good for everyone who shoots a lot and who does not always have guaranteed hits. I was also briefly tempted by the laser sight, but those are really only good for rangers and we have one shotgun array equipped with one, so there's not really that big of a need for a second. And with that, we can now fly back to where we left off scanning last time. Fittingly, it is for more intel, and I have a good feeling that we could use some more. And just as we arrive, another bar of progress is added to the Avatar project, but we also did that last episode. We have an alien facility in our back pocket that we can attack at any time to remove a point. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. You should recognize the simplicity of these tactics, Commander. For they are the same as those you employ against the Elders. And we suffer another sabotage at the hands of the Assassin. This one stings a bit, removing an Illyrium core and putting one of our scientists out of action. But then again, it could always be worse. Our scientist will recover, and we still have a good number of Illyrium cores left. The Chosen aren't afraid to resort to sabotage tactics if it means slowing down our efforts. We need to work to prevent these attacks before they catch up with us. And speaking of Illyrium cores, we will most likely get to use one shortly, as the Proving Ground has just finished a spider suit. That means we now have a suit of armor with a grappling hook, much like the skirmishers. This will allow its wearers some extra vertical mobility, very useful for classes like sharpshooters and rangers, who either benefit immensely from the high ground or just move around a lot. Now onto our next project, which will indeed consume one Illyrium core as well as 125 supplies, because up next we're going to unlock skull mining. Interesting choice. I'll send word as soon as we're finished, Commander. This is a separate ability that can be used with the Skulljack, allowing us to mine the brain of an enemy target and extract some intel or an alien facility lead, and if used correctly, it can actually be a pretty reliable source of intel. And well, I think we have established that you can never have enough intel, especially on Legend difficulty, so let's get this underway and continue scanning, and unless anything else pops up, we should have the end of the month report coming up next. Got an urgent communication coming in for you now, Commander. I had high hopes for the Resistance under your leadership, Commander. And you have outdone yourself. Alright, despite the aliens gaining four points of Avatar Project progress, the Council seems to be happy with us. And indeed, it does feel like at the moment we have things well under control. Finally, the pursuit is over. Now the real fun starts. I'll be there soon, Commander. Right, so both the Assassin and the Hunter are very close to maxing out their knowledge bars, and I'm actually tempted to let at least one of them also reach that point, just for the sake of full completion. Meanwhile, let's take a look at Dark Events, where we have Resistance Informant, which I think would be acceptable. Retaliation missions are always tough, but nothing that we can't handle. Viper rounds on Advent Soldiers, meanwhile, that would be nasty, that is, if we get hit by them. So far in this playthrough, though, we have actually done a very nice job not getting hit, so let's reveal the hidden event. This one, again, potentially annoying, but only moderately dangerous. After all, there is always the risk that one of the Chosen goes to capture one of our soldiers, and letting this come to fruition might actually make the Chosen play more aggressively, which we could then exploit ourselves. So yeah, let me know which one you think we should counter. Personally, I don't think that any of them are terribly dangerous, but as always, I would be interested to hear what you think. Finally then, we have resistance orders, and here we're actually going to make a change. Yes, Double Agent did serve us nicely at that one time, but again, intel could be very important for the next few weeks, so let's increase all intel rewards by 15% with Inside Job 2. For 10. Our supply drop has increased to over 800 supplies now, and we might want to grab some of those shortly. First of all though, let's finish that intel scan. We are victorious, 
and the cause is advanced. And well, we might not need to grab supplies that soon after all, as our covert action has been completed and gives us some. However, more importantly, it also gives Ranger Starfall and Tech the long-awaited promotion to Major. And with that, we could now finally hunt down one of the Chosen for good. Before we embark on our next covert action, however, let's take care of that promotion. Commander, our ring facility is currently idle. If we have the soldiers to spare, we should deploy them on a covert action with the Resistance. Now, the Ranger abilities that are unlocked at the rank of Major are a bit underwhelming in my opinion. We have Deep Cover, which I'm really not a fan of, simply because not attacking is just something a Ranger usually doesn't do, except for the occasional Overwatch. And so, for that reason alone, we're going with Untouchable pretty much by default, as this ability actually rewards killing stuff, and not having to worry about one more enemy attack can be huge, as our Templar has demonstrated multiple times. And with that taken care of, I think we can now assign our next covert action. We've got a shot at hitting the elders hard, something we haven't tried before. You up for it, Commander? Now, admittedly, I was very tempted to use our newly acquired Major to finally hunt down one of the two Chosen. However, that's before I saw that we actually have two covert actions available here that would reduce Avatar project progress, with the second one being somewhat of a holy grail as it also offers a promotion. And so let's do something here that I hope pays off and immediately advance Starfall Antec again, this time to the highest rank of Colonel, a promotion that he would otherwise need to wait a long, long time for. He will be accompanied by Grenadier Echo Sierra, I think it's time we level up a third Grenadier, and will also gladly assign the supplies to negate the capture risk. However, there is still a high risk of getting ambushed, so let's prepare accordingly. That means Starfall will get a shotgun that already has a few attachments to it, and will also give him a battle scanner just in case. Grenadier Sierra, meanwhile, gets the best mag cannon we currently have, which admittedly doesn't mean much. We definitely have a few better attachments still lying around that we could use. As an emergency option, she gets a Mimic Beacon, and with that I think we're set. Let's send the two of them out to reduce the Avatar Project counter once more. Now at this point, before we continue scanning, we first have to reassign the engineer we just sent out on the previous COVID action. Dr. Isaac Schmidt is ready and available again, so let's put him back on excavation duty, preferably not in the spot that Dylan Schmidt already occupies, and eventually, once we have everyone sorted out, we can continue scanning. Strategic resource located. And there we go, we have claimed 45 intel. And I think, at this point, it would be a very good idea to see what we can do with them. Avenger plotting new course. So, we are once again flying over to the black market. This time, however, we are not purchasing anything. I would just like to see what's available. We can also see here that the market is particularly interested in Stun Lancer Corpses, Illyrium Corps and Archon Corpses. The latter two we will definitely not part with, but we have some Stun Lancer Corpses to spare. So let's sell three, which still leaves us with four, enough to produce another spider suit, a project where they're needed. On the buying side of things, I would then once again like to hear what you think. Once again, we have three superior grade weapon attachments as well as two superior PCS, and I think the scope in particular is something we just have to get. But we have one month to make a decision, so again, let me know in the comments down below what you think we should grab. And with that, our next destination is now a familiar one, the Skirmisher HQ. Time to speed up some of our building and excavation projects. Can you aid us, Commander? We are in need of your experience. All right, looks like today's mission has finally arrived, and it seems to be an absolutely fabulous one, allowing us to potentially acquire Intel, a scientist, as well as a captain-level grenadier, and all three of those rewards would definitely fill some needs. And that's not to mention that the mission SIDREP means that we will only be fighting Lost, which in turn means that we can probably go a bit easier on the squad selection. This mission is definitely tailor-made for some of our lower-ranking soldiers. Setting course for Sector 1. The Arctic. And so here we are with a squad led by Sharpshooter Zunami and Reaper Sleeper. We also have Ranger Hussar Sobierski as well as Julian the Spark. And unless I'm mistaken, this is actually the first proper mission for Sharpshooter Luna Radonis as well as for Specialist Vintage Blade. Since we will only be fighting Lost, we are also not in need of any extra equipment, although we will give Tsunami here the spider suit. Now that we have it, we might as well use it. The spider suit will improve our soldiers' chances of dodging an attack. 
while also providing increased agility and grappling capability. And with that, we're good to go. Let's kill ourselves some lost and hopefully get some promotions for those who need them. Ranger deployed. In position to drop. One of the resistance factions sent some kind of expeditionary force into an area that we know to be completely overrun by the lost. Don't ask me what they were doing down there, but now they've gotten themselves stranded, and the resistance is asking for our help. We'll have to do what we can to avoid being overrun. Resistance Expedition is trapped not far from your position, and the VIP is using a remote turret to hold off the Lost. We only have one clear access point to the area, so get to the target's location and escort them back to the entry point for extraction. The whole place is overrun with Lost. Don't bother trying to outgun them. After you secure the Expedition, you'll have to return to our original entry point for extraction. Don't get overrun. Keep the path back to Firebrand clear. Right, so we've had one of these missions already. We're facing a fairly tight time of only four turns, and by the end of it, we need to reach our stranded allies. The scientist can still move, meanwhile the captain needs to be carried out of here, and all the while we will be facing a lot of lost. I'm at your service. There is nowhere to hide. Case in point, Reaper Sleeper immediately detects the first group here with five, six, and seven hit points, so the lost are definitely getting tougher too. Well, I guess it's time to pull out the new toys, let's get Tsunami onto the high ground. This also activates the group, but so far that's nothing dangerous. Let's move up our spark first and see what Julian can do. Observe how it's done. Uh, how many of you have I killed? Efficient kill. Right, and just like that, the first group has been cleared out. Let's continue to advance with Reaper Sleeper. This time she does not detect anything, and that means the rest of the squad can move up too. At least for the moment, it looks like we are making very quick progress towards our targets. No activity then on the lost turn, so let's keep dashing with our Reaper. I know where you are. And that immediately reveals a whole bunch of enemies. Two groups of six lost each, one to the right and one to the left of Selica. Now, they have not spotted us yet, so let's keep it that way, at least for half of them. I think we should be able to deal with one group, though. I'm compelled to agree. And here they are, six lost, five of them outside of the building and one of them inside. And I would say let's start with those outside. On my way. In full cover behind Julian, a vintage blade can now take aim. Right, and there's the kill and the promotion for our squaddy specialist. Let's see if she can make it two for two. Well, she cannot, and that means we're now going high ground sniping with Tsunami. She does have a few good angles through the windows here, but because of squad side, she needs to use her rifle for it. Well, how about that? The last kill then with her pistol, and with that, the group is already down to only two enemies. And at this point, I think we can set the rest of the squad on Overwatch. Got it covered. Moving to this Overwatch. Is okay, Radonis misses, but Tsunami once again does not. This, by the way, enemy kill number 500 of the series. Yes, I kept count. Thus unlocking the Palom Up achievement. Not too shabby. The expedition has limited ammo reserves. If that turret runs out, the lost are going to make quick work of them. We need to reach the group before that happens. Right, so our timer is down to only two turns. However, at least with our Reaper, we should be able to easily get to our targets within that time frame. So instead, for now, let's work on finding that last remaining enemy. Specialist Blade, however, remains unsuccessful. So I think we might as well target the other group. This time, Sharpshooter Radonis is guaranteed to hit. And with that, we now have the five remaining lost incoming. 
time to give our sharpshooter a little bit of target practice. Alright, lovely. 4 kills in 1 go. Now he has to reload though. So let's keep moving forward with our Reaper for now. I will always find you. At this point, she is well within striking range of our target. And we could actually also activate them on this turn, but doing so would spawn a swarm. So we'll hold off until the coast is a little bit clearer. Especially since we also just spotted another 10 hit point brute. Our cloaked ranger Sobieski meanwhile keeps moving up too, and then we bring our spark forward and apparently put him in just the right spot to trigger another group of lost. No place for you to go on the bright side though, it's only three of them this time and they're still pretty far away, so let's go on overwatch here and hope for the best. Alright, our sharpshooters once again don't miss. No, that was good. This is the reason why we brought two of them. They're almost out of ammo for the turret, Commander. We have to get moving. And yes indeed, at this point we have no other choice but to activate our targets, and with that a swarm of lost. Probably best we get that over with at the beginning of the turn. The VIP is secure, Commander. If we can spare the manpower, we should try to bring the escort in as well. Without the VIP manning the turret controls, there's nothing keeping the Lost from overrunning this area. They're already closing in. Right, so the timer has been beaten, but we have enemies incoming. So at this point, it's time to retreat back to the evac zone. And going back first will be scientist Patrick Lathrop, nicknamed Wombat, as with all characters in the series, a patron creation, and we'll read his full biography if he makes it out of here. His retreat also triggers the Brute, and with the situation getting more and more dicey, our Reaper won't stay silent for any longer either. Thankfully though, at least technically she will, because as long as she keeps killing, she won't get detected. I need more ammunition. Coincidentally then, picking up and carrying a unit also does not break concealment, and so, still in shadow mode, Reaper Sleeper can slowly make her way back to the evac zone. The rest of the squad meanwhile holds positions for the most part, our sharpshooters definitely benefiting from that extra point of damage to our pistols, while Sobieski and Blade also grab the high ground, a good point to start chipping away at that brute. Thanks to a superior stock, the miss here still deals 3 points of damage, it also reveals our ranger, but with another soldier standing right next to him that's not a problem, and let's see if that other soldier can now get the kill. Well, she cannot, so it's up to Julian. I'm reloading. And he's got a standard stock equipped as well, so even if he misses, the kill would be guaranteed. If only Advent knew my actual body count. I am ever vigilant. He does not miss though and can now go on overwatch, just like our two sharpshooters in the back. I'm on it. And yes, this right here will now be a regular occurrence. We will have swarms coming in on every single enemy turn until we make it out of here. Depending on how we play it, that could either be very dangerous or good target practice. Get back to the entry point for extraction before you get overrun. We're picking up more heat signatures than the sensors can keep up with. And yes, Bradford is mentioning it as well here. The lost on this mission will keep coming indefinitely. And in terms of getting experience points for killing them, we are slowly but steadily approaching the point of diminishing returns. So at least for this turn, let's just keep retreating. The rest of the squad meanwhile keeps watch. Scanning. On overwatch! Moving overwatch. Down overwatch. And yes, that's another swarm appearing. Let's see what our overwatchers can do. Adjusting sights, target eliminated. 
eliminated. Time for is over. All right, so things are starting to get a little bit tight here. We have our first lost on the upper floor, so I think it's time that we start moving back a bit further. As you can see, we could already evac our injured grenadier, but we might need our reaper on the battlefield later, so let's not do that just yet. Ranger Sibirsky is also pulling back a bit. Vintage Blade, meanwhile, delivers two more guaranteed kills before she then also drops down, and so we continue to put some good distance between us and the enemies. For one more turn then, this should keep us safe. Let's see what we have coming our way and how much of that we can deal with. Two terrible misses from our sharpshooters. Not that it really changes the entire mission, but I think it was definitely unlucky. So then, things are starting to get a little bit dicey on the upper floor here. As you can see, we have a few dashes closing in that we should take out quickly. But first, let's complete our first objective and evacuate Scientist Lothrop. Firebrand is the VIP safely on board the Sky Ranger. Lovely, that's him out of here, time to focus on the Lost again. And with two 97 percenters, Sobieski should be able to clear out those closest to him. Hostile terminated. Burning through ammo fast. Moving on then, we send Spark Julian up to assist our two sharpshooters, who promptly show us that they have things well under control, as Ada Lynn here first uses lightning hands and then a regular pistol shot to take care of the enemy closest to her, and afterwards she just grapples herself into safety onto the truck below. And Luna Radonis calmly takes out another enemy too before he gets himself into safety. As you can see though, we are not completely giving up on the high ground just yet. Spotsy the Spark meanwhile puts himself into overdrive mode. This now allows him to take out one more enemy. Doesn't seem all that difficult to me. To then reload afterwards. To reload, please. And to still get himself back out of here. And I would say that's plenty for one turn, so let's bring Sobierski and Blade back even further. For the moment, I think we can also drop our injured ally in the evac zone. That way, our Reaper has her hands free until we need to get out of here. I'll keep an eye on it. Herman, covering now. One five, keep pushing towards the evac point. No matter what you do, you're never gonna make a dent in the lost. There's just too many coming in. 
Yeah, and I think the current situation neatly illustrates that. It definitely looks like we are very much about to be overrun here. Still, there is potential in this situation to grab at least a few more kills. Specialist Blade delivers the first and then gets herself into the safety of the evac zone. Ranger Sabirsky, meanwhile, stays out for a little while longer. His first shot is a guaranteed kill, but we also still have an axe to throw, and it would be a waste to leave the mission without doing so. Unfortunately, though, the roll of the dice strikes and he misses a 94%er, but we do have a superior stock on him, so let's just keep targeting enemies with three or fewer hit points. As you can see, there are quite a few of them. Right, lovely, a few more kills, but now he's out of ammunition, so into the evac zone he goes. We can now follow that up with a few more high ground kills from sharpshooters and army, and actually it looks like we're able to thin out the enemy numbers quite well here, perhaps we can stay for one more turn after all. Well, how about that? Unfortunately though, at this point I made a crucial mistake, assuming that an explosive would not trigger a swarm immediately and just have it incoming on the next turn. As you can see though, despite getting us two kills, that is not the case. I've conceived every possible way to end you. The target is marked. So, now we have quite a few more enemies closing in and our Sparker won't be able to get out of here. Well, I guess we'll still put the rest of our team into the evac zone at least. Julian is heavily armored after all and should be able to take a beating. Also, this reminded me that we still had not acted with our Reaper, and well, the shot here is not guaranteed, but it is as close as it gets. I require ammunition. Right, and so we get one more kill, back into the evac zone she goes, and I think there should now only be one enemy left able to reach our spark. Alright, thanks to 3 points of armor, Julian only takes 1 point of damage, and as if the game wanted to reinforce the fact that we need to get out of here, a car blows up in the distance, and this triggers yet another swarm. Can never escape my sight. And so, yes, at this point I think we are evacuating, not before delivering a few more kills though. After all, who knows, we might still get a few tiny experience points for it. So Julian hits twice and then misses, leaving Ada Lynn to clean up the mess. Unfortunately though, with her second shot she also misses. Target's still up. On the bright side though, she's got the quick draw ability, and so she can afford to shoot her pistol twice per turn, or against the lost, one miss is not the end of the world. And with our injured grenadier already shouldered, Redonis is on the move again. Relocating inside of the evac zone here allows him to grab just one more kill. And the same is true for Specialist Vintage Blade as well, at least somewhat, as moving up here will not allow her to get any more kills, but it does put her into grenade range, and at this point we no longer care about any additional swarms. I know where you are. So, we've got even more enemies incoming and this now puts Ranger Sobierski back into the game. And let's cut a long story short, he is able to use his entire clip to get us 4 more kills, definitely showing us that he wants that promotion badly. Target eliminated. Ammo out. However, at this point we are done, there are simply no more targets left or ammo to shoot them with. So let's evacuate, perhaps one turn later than we should have, but all in all a very successful mission nonetheless. Extracted the VIP's escort. Once we get him patched up, he should be ready to rejoin the fight. All XCOM operatives are secure. Firebrand is returning to base. We successfully rescued the expedition, Commander. The Resistance will be happy to hear it. Alright, here we are, 53 enemy kills later. Not a flawless mission, but that's on us. I think we definitely could have pulled one off. Either way, we have unlocked another achievement, recruited two new allies and have at least one promotion waiting for us. So let's head back to the base. 20 years of peace and prosperity will not be undone by the reckless actions of a few misguided dissidents today. We stand with the elders. 
Trust in their wisdom, and we shall overcome this crisis. made it back whole and the aliens paid the price. Great work, Commander. Right, so we have promotions to take care of for Vintage Blade and for our Spark as well. And let's begin with our specialist, as this is an easy one. Like pretty much everybody else, she now receives Combat Protocol, simply because we are 31 episodes into the series and have maybe used medkits once or twice. For Julian then, the ability choice is between Rainmaker and Strike. The former would increase the damage and radius of his heavy weapon, in this case the rocket launcher, and while that's nice, it only improves upon an already existing ability, while Strike adds an entirely new one in a melee attack, a melee attack that can actually be used several times per mission, so in my opinion it is generally a lot more useful, even though it does somewhat compete with the Ranger. What is not mentioned here is that this strike attack also has a plus 20 aim bonus built in, and you can see it on the right side, Julian already has an aim stat of 79, meaning this attack is basically always guaranteed to hit. And that brings us now to our rescued VIP, Dr. Patrick Wombat Lathrop, submitted by the Patreon supporter of the same name and with the following biography. After losing his hometown to the initial alien invasion, Patrick Wombat Lathrop wants to avenge those he lost. He will not rest until all aliens meet their maker. Short and to the point, welcome to the team, Patrick. A glorious battle! Advent stands no chance against our combined might, Commander. Now, Dr. Wombat is not the only one we recovered from this mission. Alongside 86 units of intel, we have also secured the services of a captain-level grenadier, which immediately makes Tanya in here the highest-ranking grenadier in our squad. As a result, we will most likely see him in action a lot soon, so let's take a closer look at him and give him a few abilities. First things first, this character was obviously also submitted by a patron supporter, this time created by patron Tai Win, so once again, welcome to the team. The biography of the man nicknamed Typhoon then reads as follows. Born in Vietnam in 2007, Tai claims he finished a four-year engineering degree shortly before the aliens invaded and Advent ruled the Earth, but his gaps in specific technical experience left Shen disappointed with his performance in the workshop. Tai elected to transition from the Avengers Engineering Corps and volunteer for XCOM's frontline insertion teams, providing his squad surprisingly in-depth knowledge of firearms, electronics and advent tactics. Sounds to me like he also would have worked nicely as a specialist, but a third grenadier is what I have been looking for for a few episodes now, so I'm very happy that we now have Typhoon here on board. Now, in terms of abilities, we will first give him the first two skills from the Heavy Gunner Tree. That would be Shredder and Suppression, just because I think those are definitely superior to Blast Padding and Demolition. But we will then still build him up more towards a Grenadier, with an extra grenade from Heavy Ordnance. The two Captain level abilities we have not yet talked about. First, we have Volatile Mix, very straightforward, a plus two damage bonus to grenades. And then we have the slightly more complicated Chain Shot, a shot with a minus 15 aim penalty that will immediately trigger another shot to fire if it hits. And that second shot will also carry the same minus 15 aim penalty. Now, with the right equipment and in the hands of someone with a good aim stat, this can be very useful, but at the moment it would still be a fairly unreliable ability. So we are going with the one that we can definitely rely on, and that's Volatile Mix. However, you can see it on the right here, Tsai also has 12 ability points already. So let us quickly hop over to the training center and spend those, as there is one ability that I just need to have on my Grenadiers, and yes, I am obviously talking about holo targeting. So ability-wise, Typhoon now looks pretty much identical to Twitchy. That might change in the future though, as we also have three bonus skills to choose from, specifically Lightning Reflexes, Deep Cover and Untouchable. And I think especially Untouchable might be one that we want to grab soon, although since Typhoon here only sports a standard level combat intelligence, it might be a while until we have the necessary AP. And so for the moment, let us just be happy that we added some much needed help to our ranks. And with that, I think we have also reached a very good point to wrap up today's episode. Once again, let me know in the comments what you would like to see us purchase at the black market, and which dark event you think we should counter, and then we'll see what the game has in store for us in the next episode. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course also go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or perhaps also get your name into the series by supporting me over on Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.